Hi, my name is Clifford. And my name is Crystal. And we're here at Pacific Union College looking at two famous pieces, the Arnolfini marriage and the lamentation of the death of Christ. So here's a famous portrait of Jan van Eyck's Giovanni Arnolfini and his wife. It is also known as the Arnolfini wedding portrait, but there's a little disagreement between scholars. Right. Scholars believe that this couple was already married at the time this was painted. According to Jan Baptist Badox, this portrait depicts a newly married couple. We can really tell that these two people were very wealthy when we look around at the room because like, about the objects they are surrounded by. We can see symbolic value throughout this room. Yes, that shows significant wealth because oranges were rare and considered a luxury. Look at the oranges just lying on the side there. Also, look at the shoes. These also represent a sacred event that is occurring. Yes, this shows that they are, they are at a significant event. Some think of this piece as simply of a portrait. It's personally difficult to think that because of all the symbols that are evident around us. I agree. As Dr. Harris notes, the single candle and chandelier are present, which represent the presence of God. Also, the chandelier are extremely expensive in those days, so that also shows the wealth that the couple possessed. This event must have been somewhat sacred and divine. Also, a good detail to note is the greeters that we can see through the mirror. Right. This must be an event that was significant enough to witness. Okay, so now let's take a look at the mirror for a second. Look at what is written. It says, and excuse my pronunciation, Johannes de Eyck, Fuitic, 1434. Jan van Eyck was here, 1434. And take a look at the remarkable work of van Eyck and his detailing in the mirror. First of all, the mirror is a convex mirror that shows the two figures that the couple are facing. Scholars have made the presumption that the figure wearing red may be the artist himself. Hmm. This was based on Van Eyck's portrait of a man, which was a self-portrait. Wow, that's interesting. And speaking of details of the mirror, look at the intricate work of Van Eyck oh, yeah, and the yeah. surrounding pictures of the mirror. Look at that. The scenes of the Passion of Christ are on the panels of the wooden frame. And how small are these panels? Well, they are about half an inch, yet we can still recognize the scenes that are portrayed. It's absolutely brilliant. It is also important to realize that this was no easy task. Some of the pieces on the panel were done with a single hairbrush. Mm. And I also want to point out an irony that I always wondered about this painting. Do tell me. Well, as you can see, there's a ray of sunshine that is coming in, and as mentioned previously, oranges that are just lying there. These two things represent warmth. However, oh, you're wondering about the clothes they are wearing. Yes. Well, we will never really know the true interpretation of this portrait and what Van Eyck was thinking when he painted this. It may be due to the specific, specific sorry, event that they are in. Well, I see. It may be significant enough for them to pull out their best clothes, which, by the way, are lined with fur, another symbol of wealth, and show their guests. Right. Let's move on to the linear perspective that is shown in this portrait. The mirror is the center, and everything goes back to the mirror. But what is a bit different about this portrait is the fact that the proportion is a little bit off. The room is a little cramped, while the people in the room are a little, like, really tall. Well, that just shows that this was from the High Renaissance. It shows that the artists and people of this time were more interested in detail and texture rather than proportion. This was done through oil painting that allowed the luminous features to seep through. Van Eyck did something a bit unique from the rest of the painters who worked with oil. He layered his work. He would take thin, translucent layers of the same color and reapply it over and over again. That is how he achieved the subtlety of light. This truly is a brilliant piece. So what are we looking at here? We are looking at one of the Andrea Mantegna's famous paintings, The Lamentation of the Death of Christ. The Lamentation of the Death of Christ was one of the few oil canvas paintings during the late 15th century. Looking at this painting, there is almost a monochromatic vision of Christ. The painting contains a limited amount of color, consisting of mostly pink and gray and a little bit of brown. Yes, I feel as if the darkness of the painting creates a shadow-like appearance showing a strong sense of pathos. As you look at this painting, there's a sense of foreshortening that, is sh that draws us in at the side of Christ. Just by looking at his position of the body, I feel like I'm at the side of Christ. I see what you're saying about how this technique of foreshortening draws in the viewer, but to me, it personally looks like the painting is a little bit distorted. Very good point. There is, is a little distortion. The feet are very tiny, and as you continue to look at the body, it becomes gradually bigger and brings the attention of our eyes to the face. I like how Dr. Zucker put it in, from the Khan Academy put it. He states that as you stand right in front of the painting, the feet are seen through the peripherals and our eyes are drawn right to the face. 
I see it. Mantegnas has given us an unusual viewpoint of Christ. He places us at the feet of Jesus and by doing so adds empathy toward this painting. His face is filled with suffering. I like how Dr. Harris from Khan Academy observed it. She states that she observes real pain in his forehead and his eyebrows being contracted together. There is a sense of humanity brought here. Also, the way his hands and feet are being propped up, just like how his head is being propped up, adds emphasis to the importance of Jesus' death. I feel like Mantegna is trying to portray the pain Jesus went through for the sake of humanity. Looking at this picture as a whole, we are left with three mourners, St. John, the Virgin Mary, and Mary Magdalene. We know it's Mary Magdalene because in the back on the right side, there's a jar of ointment which signifies the ointment Mary used on Jesus. I feel like there's a bit of irony in this painting because Mary, the mother of Jesus, is at the side of her son. The norm would be the child bearing the parent, but having Mary at the side of Christ adds to the empathy of this painting. Mm, really good point. I like how Keith Christensen put it in his book, Why Magtegna Matters. All this cannot help but move the viewer who finds himself at Christ's feet, in the position of Mary Magdalene, who bathed those same feet with those tears. One cannot help but be moved by the intensity of the emotions of this picture. Yes, this picture exemplifies the changes that are taking place in the 15th century, where there is an increasing focus on the humanity of Christ. Authors at this time are trying to depict more emotions. Mm.